Hey y'all. Um, so we are back for week nine, and we have about nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, five weeks left. Um, but this week we're going to focus on chapter six of reading pop culture. Um, so this week's reading is about movies and whether or not the big screen still shapes our dream or not, which I know for me it has. Um, so as we read the four readings in chapter six, we will reflect on different aspects of movies and how it affects us viewers. So the first one is called The Imagination of Disaster by Susan Sonatag. Um, the first type of film she discusses is science fiction. While they are all fake, they do portray unbelievable scenarios in the real world, world that can make us viewers believe that there's a chance of it actually occurring. Um, science fiction nightmares come too close to reality for us at times. Uh, they are broken into scenarios that most films follow, a basic outline. So, one, the arrival of the thing, which is a monster, alien, you know, etc., um, which is witnessed by one person and no, uh, no one else will believe them. And then two, the hero witnesses it and the local police gets involved. Three, national emergency is declared. Four, main characters are in danger. Five, ultimate weapon in draw is drawn and killed the threat. So there's a vast amount of wishful thinking. Some of it has a happy ending while others are more depressing. So in the end, science fiction films are not about science. They're about disaster, and that's where the human mind starts to drift and dream, leading to nightmares. So the second reading is called Hollywood's Love Affair with Surveillance by Willie Osterweil. <laughs> so the first big case of surveillance goes back to George Orwell's 1984, where everything was filmed, monitored by police, wiretaping, everything. Um, and it carried all the way into modern day with things such as Hunger Games, the Jason Bourne films, Iron Man, Robocop, and there's just numerous. Um, and it's starting to become reality, not just something that's seen as movies. You can't even go for a walk without being filmed by your neighbor's camera out front. Um, it's only a matter of time before we get to the point where movies are at. So the third reading is called Has Hollywood Murdered the Movies by David Denby. David Denby. So Denby focuses on three things. One, mainstream American movies are in trouble, mostly financially. While websites give summaries and reviews of movies, it is unlikely that they can build up an audience for movies if viewers aren't interested. If I see a movie about, honestly, I'm not into Star Wars, but if I see a movie about that, I'm not going to go watch it. Um, as much as I read up on it, I'm not going to go watch it. <laughs> so as director, and directors still need to need a sizable audience to be able con to continue. It also has to do with the fact that things such as Netflix and the internet have become a way to watch movies. So the second case that is made is a resort for certain directors. So it is short and short, basic and straight to the point. Those who are successful in making a film can create fim similar films to be able to attract the same audience back. It may be small, but they'll be making more profit back than those directors who do not succeed. So, and the final point is learning how to understand what people want. So learning what makes a big, a movie big, what made the old movies succeed and how they were put together is things that need to be taken into consideration. There's a logic to it and is not just a writing, is not just writing a fun and exciting story. Um, so the last reading is called Seven Steps by, to the Perfect Story written by Content, Content Marketing Association. And it is seven steps to be able to create a successful storyline. One, understand your story. You need th things such as a problem, middle, and a solution. And in the middle, that includes a call to adventure, conflict, transformation, growth, closure, and a reach to the end. Two, you need to choose your plot. There are many different types, and it all just depends on the type of movie a director wants. Some include overcoming a monster, a quest, comedy, or rebirth. Uh, three, choose your hero. There are different types, and again, it goes with the type of movie. Do you want a unwilling hero? Do you want a tragic anti-hero? Do you want a lower hero? Depends. Four, choose your character. There are ten different types. Five, observe the rule of threes. For example, the three stooges, Goldilocks and the three bears, three blind mice, you know. Six, choose your media, whether you want dance, print, theater, film, music, web, what it is. And the last one is observing the golden rule. So that is it for reading pop culture.
and now for the rhetorical act we will focus on chapter six and it is called the resources of organization and we will f formally organize we will formally learn i can't talk how to organize a rhetorical act so the first we thing we need is a is a thesis oh my gosh there's a five there are five rules to that one is it a, is it it is a simple sentence. Two, it is a declarative sentence. Three, it limits your topic. Four, it suggests your pur purpose. Five, is it a capsule version of everything you will say or write? So next is outlining. You need an introduction that has three parts, your body of your speech, slash writing that will hold your main points, and finally your conclusion that sums up everything. An outline will help you develop your ideas in ways that one can present their speech or an essay in an organized manner. So the next thing that needs to be done is to pick a way of organization. There are three structure types. So the first one is sequence structures and that carries three different portions. One chronological, two narrative, three spatial. The second one is topical structures and that carries two portions, one parts, two perspectives. And the final, final is logical structures, one casual, two problem solving. So finally, you must consider adjusting your structure and outline towards your audience. That way they can be entertained and engaged. Uh, you wouldn't want to rant about sports to an audience full of video game lovers. So that is the end. See you next week.